Ready? Maybe. <laughs> Ready for what? Ready Hit for what? <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Remind podcast. Today, I'm joined with the lovely, the one, the only, Ash Morland. And we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic that's a little bit closer to home, Ash, than we'd probably like to um, recognize, which is, I don't know if this is going to be the title, we'll, 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 we'll fix it a bit later, but what did you hear that I did not say? So it's more sort of wrapped up into, is there something else you may have added to the conversation or a feeling that you added that I didn't really intend to put out there? Yep, 100%. So this is huge. And it comes down to the fact that our mind by default fills in the blanks. It's what it does. So we interpret information in our environment and then based upon the filter system of our mind, the information comes in, goes through the filter system of our mind based on past experiences, based on memories, based on all these things, and our mind fills in the gaps. And if it's okay with you, Dave, I'm going to share a story of how this actually came about in my world because I use this statement all the time with clients. What did you hear that they didn't say? And last year, we moved into our home that my husband and I had bought and the house is a double story house, except the whole house itself is upstairs. So all the bedrooms, bathrooms, kitchen, everything is all upstairs. And then under the house is a large space that's like a, it could be used as another living space. My intention is to use it as a, a big open space for workshops and those kinds of things. Anyway, when we moved into our house, we moved all of our boxes down into that space downstairs. And so upstairs, it felt like a livable space. There wasn't mm. clutter everywhere. There wasn't crap everywhere. We unpacked things that we needed and then everything else went down into that room downstairs. And my husband had said to me last year, I would like to have downstairs sorted by the end of October. And what he meant was I'd really like to have downstairs sorted by the end of October. Hmm. But when I received that, I was so triggered because what I, I was so upset. Like I was, I sh had an immediate stress response. I shut down. I wanted to start crying. And he was like looking at me going, what the hell just happened? And he said these magic words. He goes, what did you just hear that I didn't say? And I realised that when he said, I would like to have downstairs sorted by the end of October, what I actually heard was, why haven't you sorted out downstairs yet? You should have done that already. You're lazy. And I heard all these stories that were coming to the surface that he didn't say, mm -hmm. he didn't mean, it wasn't his intention, and they weren't even coming from him. And so my mind had overlaid a meaning to his words that wasn't even real. And it was the meaning that hurt me, not his words. And it absolutely blew my freaking mind. <laughs> Because <laughs> really his his meaning was, you know, let's get downstairs sorted. I'd like yeah. to set a time limit to it. Doesn't yeah. mean you have to do it yourself. But can we? Nope. Was he happy to help? Yep. Was like, could we take our time with it? Yep. Was there any malice? Nope. Was he calling me lazy? Nope. Not, nothing. There was no hidden agenda or underlying meaning. 
he just said what he meant, which for most men out there, they generally tend to do that. Men are pretty black and white. They say something, Mm -hmm. they mean it generally. And so my mind just completely just was out of control and overlaid all these meanings. And I was so hurt because of the meanings that my mind had assigned to what he said, which was not intended at all. Which is interesting because that's obviously come from things in the past. Mm-hmm. That's of which, you, yes, of which you've probably felt like, or you've been told in similar-ish situations. Not like directly, you've just moved into a mm-hmm. house, you put all the boxes downstairs, and now you know. But there might be something where you've been in a situation where you've done something, and then someone's probably told you or made you feel, even if they didn't tell you, made you feel like you're being lazy or something like, yeah. is that what you're saying? A hundred percent. And, and you've, so, you've brought that into this conversation. Exactly. And so my beautiful husband who has journeyed with me through lots of healing and I have effectively coached him in how to coach me in those moments, um, but that was all him. Completely intuitive response to that situation and it, I use it all the time. I teach well, all my clients. It's amazing because I could I I can't think of examples, but I would know that I would have been in very similar situations many years ago, similar to, to that, but my response would have been a triggered reply. Mm. Which would have been, What the hell are you talking about? All I said was I'd like to get downstairs organized. Don't get like that. You're being ridiculous. You're being crazy. Why are you taking this out of me? Did you know, blah, blah, blah. And then it would have been bang, 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 bang. All the way up, all the way up the escalation ladder. 100 percent And this is one of the biggest, most exciting revelations that people can have. Because when you realize like he has the awareness that my reactions to things are more to do with me and what's inside me and the filter system of my mind than anything to do with what's happening around me. Mm. And so if I'm reacting in a way that's irrational or silly or anything like that, it doesn't change the fact that my reaction to that was irrational except Mm. telling me that I'm being irrational and I'm being silly and to suck it up and don't be stupid is gaslighting a very wounded part of me that's exposed in that moment. Yeah. So, so it's it, that beautiful moment of being able to go, coming in with curiosity, going, wow, what is what is coming up for you right now? Like, And, and the reality is, like, there's been times when um, I have asked my husband to help around the house or something like that, And he's gotten really triggered and really upset over it. And I can see in that moment, like when we've been able to talk about it and I've said, like, what is it that's coming up for you? When I asked you to do this, what did you actually hear? And the stories that he was hearing were things like nothing uh, nothing you do is ever enough and those Mm -hmm. kinds of things. And the reality is if that were true, If he were really saying to me that night, why haven't you sorted out downstairs yet? You're so lazy. You should have done this, blah, blah. If he had have actually said that, it would have been really hurtful. Hmm. But he didn't say that. Not only did he not say it, he didn't even mean it with what he did say. And same, when I've asked him to do things around the house, It's not because I think he's lazy. It's not because nothing he does is enough. It's not because of anything. It's just because I've seen that the bin's full and I'm cooking dinner on the stove. And if I take the bin out, then I'm going to burn the dinner on the stove and I just need some help or something like that, Mm. you know. It's literally just this is what's in front of me. Hey, can you please help me with this? No meaning, nothing else attached. And so the biggest contributor to fights and conflict in any kind of relationship, whether it's in a workplace, a friendship, a working relationship, a marriage, parenting, anything, the biggest source of conflict and emotional dysregulation is a mismatched meaning versus intention. Well, the the essence of communication, right? It's sort of 
you can deliver a message, but even the written word can be interpreted in many different ways. Hence why we have emojis now. Smiley face. Yeah. Um, it's like you're always late as a text message versus mm -hmm. you're always late, head sideways, tears coming out, laughing, crying, right? Yeah. It's completely two two different meanings. But yeah. I love the fact that it's sort of like, what did you hear? I'd like to add, add an extra little bit to that. What what did you feel? Mm -hmm. What did you hear? What did you feel? Um, because when you can have those conversations and my amazing, wonderful best friend, Jackie, will always um, point out to me, if I'm saying something that comes out in a certain way and it makes her feel something, she'll skip the, this is what I heard. She goes, you've just made me feel this way. Mm -hmm. And if I meant it, then I'll continue down that line and go, well, yep, you've read it correctly. But most of the time it's all like, actually, didn't mean it that way. I meant it kind of this way. Yes. And we've, we've opened up that sort of conversation to sort of go, okay, because, you know, but it's very difficult because I could just, I could just remember the times I'd just be triggered by these things and to be able yeah. to slow down. What did you hear? What are you feeling? Yeah. And it, so the feeling comes first before the analysis, right? So I knew that I was feeling hurt by the way that I reacted to what he had said. Mm. But the thing is, I could say, you hurt my feelings because you did this, or you made me feel like I wasn't good enough and that I was lazy. But was it, is it actually true that he made me feel that way? Well, he, he did only by the fact that he said something, gave you some sort of input that you then, because if he'd said nothing about downstairs, that wouldn't have started. So but he was, yes, there was a stimulus, but stimulus the point that I'm only, making, yes. 100%. So that was a stimulus and I had a mm. response. But the, the thing is, if I didn't have that wound in me and he said, I'd like to have downstairs sorted by the end of October, I would have correctly heard, I'd like to have downstairs sorted by the end of October. And my response to that would have been, oh, yes, sounds good. Sure. Should we, yeah. should we get started this weekend? Like, what are your movements? Let's make a plan. It would have been totally fine. So I would argue that the stimulus itself is not the thing that made me feel the way I felt. So it's not oh, fair for you to say you yeah. made me feel this. The thing that made me feel that was the old story and the old data inside my mind that lied <clears> to me <throat> in that moment. It, it, it but, isn't it, but isn't it funny how, and I love it, the fact you, you call this stimulus, how often do we apportion blame to the stimulus? Yes. So, um, and then, so when this, when the stimulus of came to you, right, and sort of said said that, and then suddenly you felt this reaction, you know, I know in the past I would have been like, you've made me feel this way. Mm -hmm. But it, no, it's it's inside of me as to what has sort of popped up and then we then end up arguing about the justification of why I felt this way because actually no I felt that way because you said that mm -hmm. and then other person and it's like this to 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 this all the way up yeah. um and so like I'm going to take a moment because I'm just going to recall exactly how many arguments in my previous relationships I've had just because of this. And whether I'm the one being triggered or whether I was the stimulus, I mean, it, it accounts for so much mm -hmm. to be able to just slow down and go, what did you hear? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what did you feel? Yeah, 100%. And I think, so this is coming into uh, bringing a little bit of the spiritual element into this. I've shared before my, I'm going to use the word God. My mm -hmm. spiritual frame of reference is spirit, what I call spiritual Christian. And so the way I see it is that God will use anything and everything. And God's not the one hurting me. 
the hurt's already in me. That wound, mm. that pain, that insecurity, that's already there. The problem is if I don't know it's there, I can't change it. If I don't know that pain exists in me, I can't heal it. And so the only way for me to know that it's there is for it to come into my conscious awareness. What's mm. the best way to bring it into my conscious awareness? Well, we need a stimulus. We need a stimulus, a circumstance, a person, a situation, a comment to be able to shine a light on it. Mm. And so for me, when I, when something has triggered me, rather than blaming the person, I have a lot of gratitude towards that person because that morning when I woke up, I didn't know that was inside me. And now because they have afforded me the opportunity through something they've said, through something they've done or not done or not said, they have afforded me the opportunity to see something within me that is presenting to heal. And so I just think that is so powerful because when I'm triggered by something, and especially when, you know, my husband, the people closest to us are the ones who will be used because mm. we, our souls are so closely united, like we're, we're soul family and not just, you know, life human family but soul family. And mm. so for me when I go, wow, my husband, my ex-husband, my kids, my parents, the people who are closest to me are playing the roles of the stimuli to show me what I need to transcend, to show me the pain that I'm carrying and holding in my body, the old programming, the old patterning. And I see this like a sultan, sultan wound, right? Mm. If, I, if I have a wound on my skin and I get some salt, and I pour salt on that wound, it's going to sting like heck. But if I have perfectly healed skin and I get the same salt and I pour the same salt on that perfectly fine skin. You're about to have, have a tequila. Tequila. You're about to have a tequila yeah. shot. Yeah. Exactly. And so when I am in a world where I'm expecting everyone around me to turn their salt into water so they don't hurt my wounds, I am completely disempowered. What if mm. the salt could stay salt, the salt could stay salty, but I could heal the wounding, which meant it was no longer triggering, it was no longer activating what was inside of me. The thing is, if I don't feel the sting, I don't know where the burn is. It's kind of like, if you've ever um, tried to locate a hole in a in a tire, like to repair a tube, what do you do? You submerge the tube into water and see where it bubbles. Yeah, look for the bubbles. Yeah, and the stimulus is the water, right? You could say, well, if you just didn't put the tube in the water, there would be no bubbles, David. So well, why did very, you put the tube in the water? It'd it's make for problem. a very interesting bike ride, anyway. <laughs> Either way, but but I, I, I get, I, and there's a lot of people, and I'm one of these annoying people that will sort of say, "Well, these these experiences of triggering are gifts, right?" Yes, they sure as hell don't feel like it. And you know, I'm the same person that would have looked at it and sort of said, "The reason," and this is, I'll, I'll go back to a fairly unconscious version of myself, say mm -hmm. five, six, seven years ago. That would look at these sort of things and go, I, there is no way I would be feeling this way if you weren't being an idiot. Yeah. Or if this didn't happen or if this didn't happen. And now to today, if something happens that I really don't like or it's triggering, I'm curious about it, even to the point, and I, I still have to laugh at myself to sort of go, thank you for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. right still part of me just sort of has to go are you are you being a bit full of yourself yeah maybe maybe not but it is absolutely correct that it's sort of it's been shown to you to do something with it yes but to get from that point of i am simply a consequence or these these feelings are a consequence of my surroundings the people it's a whole difference between the powers external versus internal 
this mm. this trigger is a gift versus um, it's happening to me and I'm being victimized by it. Um, because when you when the penny starts to drop and you start to do one, two, even if it's just small things, and you start to see this whole thing of what did I hear? Because even if you can rationalize it, because where I started, it was trigger, react, go to town. And then as I started getting better, it was then reflection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Once I'd calmed down, became more regulated, then we could have that conversation and hopefully be, be better next time. Next time came along, maybe I was a little bit better, but not by much. And then you keep on rolling with it. and But just know, like what we're saying, this is a gift. This is an awareness. This has to come up for you to, to, to look at because like Ash said in her earlier, earlier thing, she never, she wasn't aware about that morning and it mm -hmm. came up to be released. How else are these things going to come out? There is not like, you can't sort of just a bit like a computer type in, um, Trauma Control forward that. slash, you know, let's just, Control can that. I just find, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, you know, that's exactly it. Control F in life is people. Triggers. People and circumstances. Stimuli, right? Yeah. Because otherwise you, you, just, you could just go it. through, generate a report of all your traumas, grab the little trash can next to each of the traumas and go bin, 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 bin. Yeah. Just run an antivirus. Yep. A malware, like w whatever it is. But just sort of know that these triggers, while they feel like it's just people being idiots and things like that, it is really there for you to release it because there is a situation that exact same thing, the exact same stimulus can generate a completely different response within you without yeah. it. Yep. A hundred percent. And I was just saying this to someone yesterday. Um, no one in my whole life has been able to support my healing as much as my ex-husband because he can hurt me and take me to depth that no other human walking this earth can. And So, so you're just saying he, he, he knows all the buttons and the triggers? He knows every button and he knows every... It was almost like he has that control F of all of my trauma and wounding. And he sits there and goes, which one today? That one. Go. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm going to help you find this trauma today. But I don't have it. And so it's almost like in this, in this weird um, spiritual way, his soul is helping my soul by showing me, by shining the mm. light, going, this is the one now. This is the one. And so if he wasn't in my life, I could go and I'd be like, happy, yeah, this is great. I'm so healed. I'm so righteous. I'm so holy. I don't have impure thoughts. <laughs> but I need him there to show me where the, the depth of my impure thoughts are, where the, the, the pain still is, where the resentment still is, where that next layer of mm. resolving and clearing malice and hurt and slander and all these things that, that are still within me. And as you heal, you're able to navigate triggers more, which means that situation at level X used to really trigger you. But then you heal and situation at level X no longer triggers you. You're able to regulate. So guess what? It's like activating the next level of the computer game, the video game. Mm. Then someone else has to come along and take you to the next level which is going to trigger you and then you heal that and then they go to the next level and trigger you and heal that and then they go to the next level. Mm. So it's those people in your life that can hurt you like no one else can who are inviting you to that next level of healing, which sounds so messed up. I understand if, if this is a completely new so concept. Completely, you, yeah, completely counterintuitive. Yeah. Because if you, if you like someone, if you're a decent person, you wouldn't trigger them. And what you're saying is, actually, it's probably one of the greatest gifts you could get give anyone is to piss them off. 
Yeah, and I'm not suggesting that you guys are in order for me to be a good friend. How can I really upset these people? I know they're wounding and I'm going to I'm, go and just push their buttons. I'm not suggesting I'm going to take that some way. notes for next week. <laughs> Remember that the, the topic of conversation is what did you hear that I didn't say? We play hmm. this role for each other completely unconsciously. So hmm. I will just through the nature of our of doing life with people I will say things that will come across as really hurtful. Um, and, you know, Dave, I don't know how comfortable you feel going into this. I would love to shine a light sure. on the beautiful, vulnerable conversation that you and I were able to have about a situation that came up. Um, Around the, 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 the production the, the of this SOP. podcast. Yeah, yeah, the SOP. So in, in um, my business of the Remind Institute, Something that I was really focusing on is putting together standard operating procedures of every aspect of everything that we do in our business, which just means mm. that if I'm away and anything that I'm doing, someone has an instruction manual to my job and not for any other purpose other than making sure that we can support each other in, in you know, if, if something comes up or whatever. And I had asked for Dave to... I think screen record or, or provide some information about the podcast because Dave takes care mm. of all of the post-production stuff, which is so, so helpful. Mm. And yeah. I'm going to hand over to you to share what came up for you when I asked that of you. If yeah, share sure. whatever you're comfortable with. Absolutely. Because what I really loved was how the conversation went after that like it was a very mm. vulnerable conversation and in in a situation that could have had the potential to cause conflict and separate us mm. I felt so much closer to you because you were able to share with me openly about what that had brought up for you yeah absolutely and just add a little bit more context so with this remind podcast this is a 50-50 a you know partnership between Ash and myself we use the remind as you know, under license from um, Ash's business from the Remind Institute, but everything is 50 50 between her, her and I. And so um, I take care of the production and the post production of the podcast, the YouTube, the videos, all of that. And so um, what Ash was asking is for me to give the, all the secrets away to how I do that, right? And so as part of that, what was really triggered within me was the sort of fact of, hang on, well, part of what I bring to all of this is this. This is what actually creates my importance in what we actually do. And for that moment there, I sort of very much discounted me being on the left side of the screen as you're watching it which is not just the production of what I do, because I could be a faceless person doing the, the production and uploading it. I was discounting me being actually the guy that you talk to. And so from there, when you're sort of saying, I need all of this, was well, sort of like, if I give you all of that, why do you need me? And so, um, and I didn't tell her straight away, I'm not this perfect perfection of a healed masculine. No, far from it. But, what, I, what we did do later on is I felt the feelings and I went through it. And, you know, I'm, even as we're talking about now, I can sort of feel my body reacting. More importantly, sort of in, in my sort of arm and things like that, almost like a slight mm. shake. Um, but it's it was really cool to then sort of go, actually, what I was feeling in this sense was I see more of my value in having secrets or power in this dynamic because yeah. if I can't do it, no one can do it kind of thing, mm. which is which is a perception that is not very true. A lot of people are being content creators these, this time and Ash would be able to figure it out pretty quickly if I was to leave the scene fairly abruptly. So, um, and it was really interesting how I valued so much the post-production side versus, and this is what Ash sort of said to me when I told her that, dude, you're 50% of the show. <laughs> and <laughs> so, but it was difficult to sort of say because normally you just want to keep it hush because the feeling of being vulnerable that way isn't pleasant because you want to feel okay to sort of go, I've got this. I've healed to a point where this is not an issue. 
there's still ego, there's still shame, there's still fear of, you know, David, you're being an, you're being an idiot. So, um, but yeah, then absolutely, when we had that conversation, it's allowing us to be more open around these things as we navigate creating this podcast together, this project, this passion project for the two of us. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, that was awesome, I've, wasn't it? And so, so my intention when I asked for that stuff was zero for, malice whatsoever. No, it had not even crossed my mind that you might hmm. think she's trying to get rid of me or um, I won't matter anymore or she won't need me anymore or anything like that. It had not not even crossed my mind as a possibility mm. that it could be interpreted in that way. But your mind overlaid because of your own history that had nothing, that existed before this show even existed. It existed before For we sure. even met. Mm. But that was the stuff that influenced the way that you interpreted that request. And mm. what I love is having relationships and every healthy friendship that I have has to be like this mm. because if you can have a relationship where you can be vulnerable and go when this happened this is what I heard and this is what I felt I did when when you shared that with me I didn't go into a shame response going oh, I'm so sorry I shouldn't have said that and oh I you know that's not what I meant at all and I, I didn't go into justification and all that kind of thing because it was you sharing something that was yours mm. and being able to hold space for you and kind of go, wow, thank you so much for, for telling me that. Like mm. that's a next level kind of trust and um, I think respect and honour and what a gift, like what a gift for us to be able to navigate because, guys, things are going to come up. Things are going to come oh, up absolutely. In, in every relationship, in every friendship. Another example, um, my, uh, my niece had a birthday and was having like a, a small birthday thing, right? My daughter wasn't invited, which triggered me. And so I wanted to project my hurt about the situation onto my daughter so that then she would be hurt by the situation, thinking, well, why wasn't I invited? That's so hurtful. And when I reflected on it, the situation was this. I assigned a meaning to the situation, which put a negative spin on it. The mm. reality was what they were doing, they could only have X number of kids and she'd already invited these kids. All of that's redundant. But when I actually sat with it and I thought, what is this bringing up for me? If it didn't mean that, what am I reading into this situation that's not actually there? And what mm. I realised is that when I was in primary school, um, I skipped a grade. And the grade that I went to, they had been together since like the start of primary school and I wasn't yeah. part of the friendship group. And so one of the girls had a birthday invited the whole class to her birthday party but didn't invite me and so when my niece had a birthday thing and my daughter wasn't invited it had nothing to do with that situation it was pointing to the hurt that was in me from when I was a child and and didn't get invited and so when I was able to see that, it was so cool to be able to talk to my um, to my sister-in-law about it and go, this is what this brought up for me. And it was, but I pre-framed her and I said, I'm going to share something with you. And I want you to know that at, not at all did you do anything wrong. I know that there was no malice intended. I know this, but I want to share this with you because then we have an opportunity to be, to be closer. Mm. And it was again, another beautiful moment. Well, absolutely, because normally you'd approach that, you know, even when you're sort of you're prefacing it before you're speaking to her, in an unhealed space, you would have been like, well, this is your cousin. You have done something wrong because you've put the needs of others over mm -hmm. the top of the, the, the cousin. Yeah. And so 
you know, that's kind of where you start. But then as you go through this journey, go through this process, you end up with what did I hear? What did you hear? Can we stop, slow down and see what's being basically reflected to us within our own issues? But anyway, um, Ash, I've been loving this 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 week, so I'm very much looking forward to next week's uh, episode. I think we're coming coming up to like this is episode I think seventeen coming up to very soon our twentieth episode, which is pretty cool. So um, very cool. I would like to leave that one there and just let people know what did I hear? What did you hear? Take mm. a moment, see where it leads you. It can't hurt. Hundred percent. Hundred. Well, it can hurt. It can hurt your ego, but it can't hurt the situation, guys. And as always, we are with you. We are not coming from some pedestal. We are not coming from some, you know, righteous, yeah, place, position. We are in this with you. We've <laughs> both shared examples. Like they were examples from as recently as like a couple of months ago um, yeah. or even just a few weeks ago. So mm. this is stuff we're always navigating. And when you can really, really nail this and bring awareness to your responses and reactions, then you are empowered to transcend them and you're empowered to actually grow and heal. So if you want to accelerate your process of growth and healing and you're ready to jump feet first in, contact me for info on the next round of our group program where we really do hold your hand in a safe and non-judgmental environment to lead you through this and rewire your nervous system back towards more accurate interpretation of situations. Mm, love that. All right. Till next week, Ash. Have a great week. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.